Welcome, friends and collectors. You've joined me for an all-new edition of Diecast Emporium Military Mondays, brought to you by my friends at smallscalehobbies.com. There's the website. There's the business card information. If you are into 187 scale military models, there is no other better one-stop shopping place, at least here in the U.S., where you can go and pick up the models, the accessories such as 3D printed men, um, they even they even have different paints and accessories that you may need for any model build as well as decals, so I would highly recommend checking them out. All right, today's video, we're going to learn a little bit about the M1074 JABS, which is an acronym for Joint Assault Bridge System. Now, this is a 187 or HO scale resin kit by Arsenal M, but before we go into too much detail about the actual model kit, let's learn a little bit about the real vehicle. So, the M1074... Joint Assault Bridge System is based on the Abrams vehicle, the Abrams Main Battle Tank Hall. You can probably already tell about that. It is an armored vehicle-launched bridge with a maximum capacity of 95 tons. So it is a military load class 95 scissor bridge, also known as the MLC-95. It is in service today and used both by the U.S. military, or excuse me, the U.S. Army and the U.S. Marine Corps. They started testing prototypes back in 2012 and it went through an extensive period of about five to six years of research, development, and proving um, at Aberdeen Proving Grounds, for example. And it was finally implemented full-time and put into service in early 2016. So why was this vehicle designed? What is its point? Because as you know, even if you just watch my channel, you know that I have already done a review on this vehicle, which is the M60-based armored vehicle launch bridge, which was in service for nearly 50 years. Well, that vehicle couldn't adequately support the weight of today's modern heavy engineering vehicles and vehicles like the M1 Abrams tank. Now, we thought we had a permanent replacement already done and set in stone about 10 years ago. That vehicle was known as the Wolverine, and if memory serves me right, I think the number designation was M104. Um... That also was based on the M1 Abrams hull and chassis, but it proved to be far too expensive to mass produce in the quantity that the United States military needed. Uh, and also there were a lot of software glitches and problems with it that eventually the entire program for the Wolverine was scrapped. So there still was a need that needed to be filled, and that's where we have now the M1074 Joint Assault Bridge System, or JABS. So, two companies primarily designed and engineered this vehicle. The first were, was Israeli Military Industries out of where else? Israel. And they worked in conjunction with Leonardo DRS. Now, Leonardo DRS was the company that eventually won out the contract to produce these. And the vehicle can cross a gap or a, a indentation in the road, whether it's been destroyed by bombing runs, um... Or, you know, there's a river or stream that is preventing the battalion or the unit from advancing forward. You can deploy this bridge in under three minutes across a gap crossing of 18.3 meters. Now, the vehicle itself is unarmed, although, of course, the, uh, the, the crew have their own weapons uh, and armaments like M4s and M16s. But the only weapon that this vehicle carries is a defensive mechanism, and you can probably see it right here. I'll bring it even closer for you. So if you, if the camera will focus, if you look right here, right there, those are smoke grenade launchers. And exactly as the name would imply, if the vehicle is in a combat application where the unit, the battalion, they are taking fire from either enemy armor or small arms fire, RPGs, whatever, this can hide itself by deploying those smoke grenades. There you go. Now, because this was usually with an armored battalion, you're going to have its own protection in terms of Bradleys and Abrams. So at least you have that going for you. Now, to deploy the bridge, it is a simple push-button system. And from there, the onboard computer systems take over and deploys the bridge and or retrieves the bridge if you're going in the opposite direction. So, quick demonstration here. Because the model kit is only, a, it, you're only able with this model kit to build it in a deployed or working mode. So let's say he has just deployed the bridge. Done. Now he would, this would retract upwards. The driver would drive across the bridge and then wait for the other elements in the column, such as a Abrams tank, 
to safely cross the said gap and crossing, be over the bridge, and then from the opposite side, it would then go and drive back in to the gap right here, and then fold up the bridge scissor style and be able to take it to the next place where it's needed. Again, oversimplifying things, but that's basically how it, re how it really works, the real vehicle. Let's now take a quick break, and when we come back, we will focus solely on the scale model. Transitioning now to talking solely about the, di the uh, I should say, resin scale model that you see here. I mentioned before it's an Arsenal M187 HO scale kit. The item number for reference, if you want to look this up, is 114-100071. At the time that I am filming this review, I paid, and you can pay if you want to buy it, $50, $49.99 on smallscalehobbies.com. Now, I know what you're thinking, and to some extent, I agree with you. That is a bit steep and perhaps maybe a bit much for this kit, especially because your display options are exceptionally limited, as this is probably the fifth time I'm saying this in this video. Can you tell? It's kind of a sore spot with me. You must build the vehicle in a fully deployed and functioning position. You cannot fold it up to a transport mode, or as a lot of guys like to do in the HO scale hobby, you can't fold it up and tie it down for a freight car load on their HO scale train layouts. So again, that is very frustrating, especially since, as I said before, this mini tanks version, you have the ability to fold it up uh, or fully deploy it, whichever you would rather do. So that is a bit frustrating. Also, the difficulty level, and again, this is just my experience. You may have a very different experience with yours, especially if you are far more experienced with these model kits than I am. I have only been building military resin model kits for a little over a year now, so take that with a grain of salt. I would rate this on a 1 to 10 scale as a 6 on the difficulty level, with some of the more harder elements being the small accent and detail pieces, which are very, very easy to damage off of the spruce, and they're so damaged that you can't repair them and utilize them. I know I personally experienced that on these pieces right here. There are two of these. I said these, as in there are a couple. Um, and these are designed to hold the, the wires of the antennas on the side of the vehicle. I can probably fabricate a decent enough solution where it looks realistic enough uh, but it is frustrating that you can't put those pieces on and they're very easy to break. Also, assembly of the bridge. So the bridge on the spruce, I should show you the instructions at this point. This will make things a little bit clearer. So the bridge is in four main pieces. You can see them here. One, two, three, and four. So you have to assemble it. And then there are these pieces, which you're provided two of each, which go between the bridge segments in order to give it structural integrity. Again, that was very, very difficult on mine, which is why you only see a couple of the supports on mine. The rest I have left off. The instructions, again, are only a single side, and it is not a step-by-step -step instruction. You are basically given four different images. Image one would be the layout of the parts. Image two is where some of the components that are in charge of the hydraulic bridge are here. These are the supports that I said broke on mine. Image three is how it looks fully deployed and putting in the supports between the bridge sections. And then image uh, number four, again, is just putting all the detail pieces and putting them on. So essentially, it isn't step by step. It can be a little bit difficult and confusing, again, to collectors who may not be experienced. Here is the box that it comes in, or at least mine came in. Very white, very plain, um, which again, I believe when we talk about scale models, the box presentation is a very, very large part of the actual scale model, especially when you're talking about marketing. You want the box to be attractive enough to grab the buyer's attention that, hey, you know what, that looks like a fun kit to do, or I immediately know what it is. The only way to tell what's inside this box, if you were at a hobby store, brick and mortar, a brick and mortar hobby store that you actually would enter into, are two stickers. One has the item number on the left, and on the right is the name of the vehicle. And many people may not know what an M1074 jab is. They may have no idea that it's a bridge vehicle. They may have no idea what era it is. So if they model World War II, uh, for example, they're not going to know, hey, was this used in World War II? Obviously, it wasn't. It's a modern era thing. So those are the negatives. The positives are that it makes an excellent looking display to display with current U.S. military vehicles. So I told you you can have an Abrams Crossing uh, or even a Bradley Crossing if you want to. 
as seen here. Um, it is a, another positive aspect about this is that it is fun to do it um, in an afternoon or a weekend. My build time from opening the box to getting it in this condition, getting it ready to, do, to show on camera, was between five and six hours. So there you go. If you want to do your hour per dollar value, it's about $10 an hour. Um, at least that's an equation that I have come up with. What are you getting for your money and how much time would it take you to do it? That said, you may be a seasoned builder. You might not run into any of the problems I had. This could go together extremely smoothly for you and you will have no issue. I only bring up my personal experience to tell the viewers that are not hardened military or resin scale model builders such as myself that I would not recommend this to a beginner. Uh, I, I would go as far as to say I wouldn't even recommend this to somebody that's been in the hobby for six, seven months. So this is a difficult kit along the lines of some of the most difficult kits I have done, including Trident kits. Um, so it was a challenge. All right. Paint. It is painted in Tamiya Light Sand, which is TS-46, which is the color that I use for all of my military models, the modern ones. I did try something different on this model, which I think looks pretty darn good. If you look at the hydraulic cylinders here, it looks like they are very realistic because I used a chrome, a liquid chrome paint pen right here. This is what it looks like. Uh, it works quite well, and I was satisfied with the result. So... In conclusion, let me wrap this video up. I, we got to be getting over to over 10 minutes here, which is exceptionally long for Military Monday's video. Here's what you need to know. The kit is for advanced model builders. It will take you several hours to do. Be exceptionally careful when you are separating all, but especially the smaller pieces and detail parts from the resin spruces as they break very, 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 very easily. And you are only provided with one of each. Therefore, Unlike mini tanks, for example, which provides you with a plethora of spare parts, should you happen to damage something, there are no spare parts that come in this kit. It also does not come with decals. So if you want your vehicle outfitted with some unit numbers or any kind of identification, uh, serial number, anything, you will have to purchase those separately. The good news is they are on smallscalehobbies.com website, so you can do that. Positive aspects. It looks great, displays great with other modern military vehicles, especially if you are doing a diorama of a bridge gap crossing where you can have multiple vehicles set up for a display. Those are my thoughts, my thoughts alone. Interested to hear yours. I am especially interested in hearing if you have this model kit and you have built it yourself. Let me know how that process was for you and what the final result was. Until next time, thank you all so very much for watching. Take care, be well. I'll see you in the next review.